If you've made the mistake of wandering into social media as of late, you'll discover that bored and self-loathing teens have started asserting the idea that there are limitless numbers of genders. This idea tightly ties into the whole tranny self-identity craze wherein men insist you refer to them as women, even though everyone knows that they are men. It's like a Monty Python episode, which people have chosen to take seriously. But what gives? Doesn't gender just mean male and female? Uh, yes. Yes, it does. But what do we mean by male and female? In order to keep my PG rating, I shall say that it involves some anatomical parts, which in the future shall be referred to by their AOL screen names, Tab A and Slot B, and some DNA. Let's start with the DNA. Every human has two chromosomes which determine gender. Everyone has an X chromosome. If the second is also an X, you are female. If the second is a Y, you are male. It's the difference in this one chromosome which causes your genotype, or gene type, to be expressed as a phenotype, a physical type, of tab A or slot B. When we ask for your gender, we're asking what your genotype or phenotype are. It's a binary system with only two options. XX slot B, female, or XY tab A, male. This is the point where my readers who learn science via social media will throw a hissy fit and point out that there are other options. What about genetic abnormalities like people with a third chromosome? Or people whose phenotype is an abnormal combination of tab A and slot B? Or what about those people, huh, Mr. Smart Guy? I wear glasses. The reason I do is because my eye is built so that the focal point is not the same distance as my retina is. This means I need corrective lenses to alter my vision so that the image does get focused on the retina. Does this mean that it would be inaccurate or somehow bigoted and close-minded to assert the idea that the eye's lens is designed to focus light onto the retina? No. What my eye shows is a breakdown in the design. Mutations have caused the original design to fail. Similarly, the variations in genes or phenotypes some people have are, in a word, a disease, just as nearsightedness or diabetes are. They are not a new gender, any more than my eyes are a new kind of vision. So what are these people going on about? I believe they have confused the objective physical expression of genes with subjective experience of being unique. The simplest form, believe it or not, is the whole tranny issue. If I may digress, tranny used to be shorthand for transmission, the part of the car which shifts gears. I know every time I write tranny, I'm thinking of a car part. Life is weird. A tranny, or transsexual in this context, is a man who says, I feel like a woman on the inside even though I am built as a man on the outside. Or a woman who says, I feel I am a man on the inside whereas I'm built as a woman on the outside. The problem with that way of thinking is this. How do they know? A man has never been a woman. How does he know what it feels like to be one? A man who says he feels like a woman is like a man who says he feels like an African white rhino. It's an entirely unverifiable claim which no one can say with sincerity. In certain circumstances, we can all say, I feel like a little kid, because we've all been children, and so we have memories of what it feels like even when we are older. A man has no experience being a woman, and so he can never honestly say he feels like a woman. Even if it happened to be true, he could never know it. So what do they mean when they say these things? No doubt, they mean that they think of themselves as female. That is, they have an internal self-image, which is the image of a female, or of an African white rhino in some cases. But just as in the case of a man who says he feels like an African white rhino, the man who says he feels like a woman is simply wrong. He is not a woman. A woman is not a man who feels that he is not a man. A woman is a woman. In simple biological terms, a woman has the XX chromosomes and the tab B at AOL phenotype. Now, for those of you who feel I'm being sarcastic in presenting the person who self-identifies as an African white rhino, I present other kin. This is the next sad stage in the de-evolution of mankind. Other kin are people who identify as non-human. Yeah, that's, that's happening. Where did all this identity confusion come from? I am blaming atheism. And also you, the American church. You guys need to get your heads in the game. If we had been doing our job for the past four decades, this would not have happened. In Genesis 127, we are told, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, 
he created them. The first thing we are told about being human is that we are made in the image of God. We are like God action figures. Whenever you see an action figure, your first reaction tends to be, Oh man, this doesn't look anything like... Name of actor or actress who played that character in the latest movie. The reason you can say that is because there is a real person whose image that action figure is intended to resemble. If there was no real actor, then you couldn't say that. Atheism tells us that God does not exist. Well, then in whose image are we made? No one and nothing. Nothing made us in its image. On atheism, self-identity is the surface description or the personal lie you tell yourself. The reason we have a national identity crisis is because we have a generation being told they are the children of nothing, and they are starting to see that imaginary family resemblance. God made us in his image, male and female. In a sense, the difference between male and female is the difference between two pictures of the same person, one taken head-on and the other one taken in profile. They're very similar in many ways, but different in others. A man has only one X chromosome, just as a picture in profile has only one eye. But we are all images of our Heavenly Father, made in His image, with equal value and worth. So what do we do with all these dozens of new gendered persons? Our response should be not one of anger or hostility, but compassion. Our brothers and sisters are so far from their father that they think that they are cosmic orphans with no father at all, and as a result, they have such a hollow identity that they can't even see themselves as they are. Men can't see themselves as men, women can't see themselves as women, and some people can't even see themselves as human. What does it mean to be human? We are told by those who think they know that human is just another primate, which is just the latest version of rodent, which is just the latest version of amphibian, which is the latest version of fish, which is the latest version of worm, which is the latest version of bacteria, which is the accidental result of rain falling on rocks, all of which came from an explosion which came from nothing. But all of that is a lie. And here is one of the many ways in which it matters. We are human, made in God's image, and made male and female. Gender is not a social construct. It is a very real part of who each of us are, even if sometimes we don't feel the part. Thankfully, reality doesn't depend on our feelings. I don't feel like being nearsighted, but I still have to wear glasses. I often don't feel like an image of God, but that's what I am, even though, like my eyes, my image is significantly out of focus. But that's why we need Jesus. He does the work of making us back into the image of God action figures that we were created to be. He sharpens the focus if we let him. The solution is to point people back to the Bible. We are human, purposefully and wonderfully made in the image of God, our Heavenly Father. We are male or female, and we are male or female before we're even born. Every cell in our bodies tells us what our gender is and our soul is etched with the image of God as either masculine or feminine. If we forget what we are, or if we simply can't see it, then we need to go to Jesus and let him heal us. Just as I need glasses to see the world, many of us need Jesus to help us see ourselves and each other as we really are. Jesus is the truth which can fix that which has been distorted by lies. Jesus paid for our sins so we can be reunited with our Father. Once we are adopted back into the family, we'll begin to see our Father for who He is, and He will help us to see His image in ourselves. Whatever you feel, you are human. You are male or female. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you are loved. Hashtag Jesus loves you.